Okay, hello YouTube. Today we are going to do a Jing Yuan guide showcase shenanigans, right? I feel like a lot of people were expecting Jing Yuan to solve all their problems, you know, it's like pay their fucking taxes, get their kid to college and so on, right? But he's just a damage dealer, okay? And he is mainly focused on AoE damage dealer with a funny single target mechanic, yes? So let us talk about his abilities first, yeah? Jing Yuan's basic attack can basically be ignored. Now his talent is basically he has a robot called Light. Lord. I'm gonna call it a robot, a stand, a mecha, whatever you wanna call it. I like saying robot and it pisses people off. I like saying robot and it pisses people off. So yeah, it's a robot. No! His robot has a base speed of 60. And every time you start combat, you get three stacks. Every stack that the robot has, it has plus 10 speed, up to a maximum of 10 stack. So it can go up to 160 speed, yes? Every single stack you have, you'll do 49% damage per hit. So if you have like 10 stack, you do 49% damage 10 times, so 490%, right? Obviously, it's individual hits, so it get affected more by the enemy defense and resistance. So it's not truly 490. The number can go up or down depending on your talent level as well, yes? The main gameplay of Jing Yuan is just gonna be trying to feed his robot with more stacks, right? If Jing Yuan is dead, the robot will disappear. If Jing Yuan is frozen or like imprisoned or any crowd control effect, the robot will also disappear. That is his passive. Now for his skill, you do damage to all enemy and you give the robot two stacks. Now your ultimate, you do damage to all enemy and you give your robot three stacks. As you can see, this is a very simplistic character. You wanna spam your E, spam your O, get as much stack and the robot hits hard, yeah? And your technique. If you use your technique, the robot gets three more stacks at the start of battle, so it'll start with six stacks. Very pog. Basically, the problem is going to be you will need some speed on Jing Yuan. Ideally, you want to be at 134 speed to consistently get high stacks on the Lightning Lord. You can either achieve that by having a speed buffer like Asta or like Ting Yun first. Eidolon also gives a speed buff or you can cheese it with Bronya, right? However, I kind of dislike playing Bronya with uh, Jing Yuan. The reason why Bronya doesn't really work too well with Jing Yuan is because she pushes an ally to get a turn, right? And she increases their damage for one turn. So if uh, Bronya buff Jing Yuan, he takes his turn, he uses E, her buff will disappear so it does not affect the Lightning Lord at all. And since now the majority of his damage is in the Lightning Lord, her E buff doesn't really do much. Her crit damage and attack buff on her ultimate does affect though, yeah? Normally, on auto battle or some players, right? They use Pranya E every single turn and Jing Yuan's E every single turn, making the two other character on your team have zero skill points, right? Auto battle is kind of ass and forcing Jing Yuan to take turns this way is also too expensive. So generally, I don't prefer Pranya with Jing Yuan unless you have like E1 Pranya or something. Thing, right? That gives her a refund in skill points. For the skill point economy of your team, it's way too inefficient, yeah? You don't want to use E on Pranya every single turn because it's kind of wasteful, mainly because uh, Jing Yuan's skill itself doesn't do as much damage as it were in the past. It's more of just a Lightning Lord generator now, yeah? My favorite support would probably be Asta or Ting Yun, yeah? Ting Yun only had to use her skill once every three turns. It's an attack buff and it adds extra lightning damage? If I'm not mistaken, this lightning damage that Ting Yun provide also scales with lightning damage that you have on your character. So if your character has higher lightning damage bonus, it also scales alongside it. So it's a lot of bonus damage. It can only trigger once per action though. Just because Lightning Lord hit 10 times doesn't mean Ting Yun's E is gonna hit 10 times, right? That's gonna be too fucking broken. They're not gonna allow that, yeah? And your ultimate. Ting Yun's ultimate gives energy back to uh, Jing Yuan and also increases damage, but this time for two turns. So your robot can actually benefit from it, yeah? Getting your ultimate quicker also allows you to generate more skill points on Jing Yuan. Well, that's one of the favorite supports for Jing Yuan. The next one is Asta. What does Asta? 
to do, you give your team an attack buff every time you use your E, depending on how many enemy you hit with your E, and your ultimate gives speed. And she's very skill point efficient, right? You can basic attack or you can hit your skill, it's fine. It'll still give you a little attack buff. This attack buff doesn't like matter too much. It's mainly the speed buff that she provides is the important one, right? The speed buff that Asta provides will make it so that Jing Yuan needs to build zero speed to consistently get his Lightning Lord high stack, like 7 to 10 stack generally. Otherwise, a lot of time you'll be stuck at 4 to 5 stack, which is kind of unfortunate, right? Another thing of note, Asta's speed buff does not affect the Lightning Lord because the Lightning Lord is an ally, but not really, right? Okay, if Asta fucking old can increase Lightning Lord speed, it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning Lord is gonna sit at like 200 speed or something. So it doesn't work, okay? So those would be my three support choices for him, yeah? So the main takeaway is Jing Yuan wants to use his E every single turn without fail. Otherwise, you get turns where Lightning Lord hits with like very little stack, which is kind of wasteful, and you have to restack the whole entire thing again, right? On average... It's three to four turns for every character without any energy regeneration with just the base number to get their ultimate back, right? And for your robot, it's two to three turns. So you can basically treat your robot as like a secondary ultimate, if that makes sense. All right, that should be fine. So for Jing Yuan's first trace, if the Lightning Lord has six or more stacks, it increases its crit damage by 25% for that attack. Six or more stacks, you get 25 crit damage. It's free stats, it's pretty normal, it's pretty reliable you get this a lot of the time yeah his second trace when you start battle you get 15 energy that's pretty normal that's pretty comfy free energy and your third trace after using your skill you increase your crit rate by 10 for two turns so that is 10 free crit rate so jing yuan has a total of 28 attack and 12 critical rate on his small notes for free and then he gets 10 crit rate from here and 25 crit damage from here right which is kind of stupid i think that's a lot of free stats for one character but hey that's why he's strong right for trace priority i would prioritize your talent so your robot and then your ultimate and then i'll go for your skill and ignore your basic attack you never want to hit basic attack on him unless there's like one of those witch enemies that tells you to not attack then yeah maybe next we go for his light cone since the majority of his damage is now the lightning lord and he has little personal damage now the optimal light cone four star option for him would be birth of self especially if you have multiple superimposed version of it it increase your follow-up damage by 24% and if enemy is under half health it increase by another 24% right so this is good all around all right so series of breakfast is a light cone you can max for free at superimposed 5 it gives you 24% damage bonus and every time you kill an enemy you get 8% attack stacking three times the attack buff lasts forever so it is 24% damage bonus and 24% attack this increases your skill your follow-up attack damage your ultimate damage and your basic attack damage as well right so if you have a max version of this i would use this over the birth of self because your ultimate still does a reasonable amount of damage and your e is every turn so it does add up right the battle pass light cone is the other option i would use for jing yuan the battle pass light cone gives you damage bonus depending on your max energy not current energy and since jing yuan has 130 energy he's always going to get 26 percent damage bonus at all times so it's basically stronger than S4, seriousness of breakfast if you count the attack in there as well if you have high refinement of this light cone i would use this over the birth of self however to max the battle pass light cone you need 200 days because one battle pass is 40 days so maxing this is gonna take forever right if you can max birth of self randomly i would use that because that's 48 to 96 percent bonus damage for your lightning lord that will be for four star option for five star option himiko light cone has the potential to do a lot of damage but it's it's just way too inconsistent sometimes. You need like multiple enemy, three and higher enemy. Whenever any enemy shield is broken, you get the damage buff, right? Ideally, you would want to use his own light cone on him because this light cone is honestly bullshit. It gives you crit damage, skill and ultimate damage. And every time you use your skill or ultimate, your next follow-up attack does more damage. It increases every part of your damage. The crit damage is hilariously high as well. If you have this, I would use that. If not, I would use Birth of Self or 
or battle pass. And for free to play option, I will use Seriousness of Breakfast, okay? For Relic set, you can use the four piece lightning set if you're farming it. However, you can also use two piece lightning set and two piece attack set. That is like a 3% damage lower than the four piece lightning set. But in my experience, it's a little bit more convenient and consistent because sometimes you may not be able to use your skill either by auto battle trolling or certain enemy or certain buffs or debuffs, right? So I prefer running two lightning to attack set just for the consistency and permanent uptime. And for my lantern ornaments or my ball and my rope, I would run the crit rate set because the crit rate set also increase your ultimate damage and your follow-up damage, which is your two main damage source, yeah? So it increase your follow-up and ult damage at 15%. It also increase your crit rate. So that's great. In total, Jingyin will have 30% free critical rate plus the 5% base, so 35% free critical rate from his traces and from this set, yeah? So uh, as you can see, I have a very powerful Jingyun here with fire damage and crit damage set. Uh, the two set that I wouldn't really put on him, but I've only been farming for Himeko, so that's the only thing I have, right? For your main stat, you would want speed boots because you want to aim for 134 speed unless you're playing Asta or Bronya. Then you can kind of ignore speed boots. For your body piece, I would run uh, crit rate or crit damage depending on whichever you have. I think crit damage is more ideal since he has a lot of crit rate for free. You want to run lightning damage on your sphere and you want to run attack on your link roll. However, sometimes I run energy regeneration rate on him just so that I can get my lightning lord back quicker if I'm not running any of the supports. But usually you would run him with one of the supports, yeah? And that'll be it for relics. Next is Adol. On. First Eidolon, uh, when the Lightning Lord attack, the damage you do to surrounding enemy increased by 25%. So normally Lightning Lord only does 25% damage to surrounding enemy and a big hit to one enemy, right? With the first Eidolon, you will do half the damage instead of 25% now. So it's basically a double damage for AoE targets. Your second Eidolon, when your Lightning Lord takes action, for the next two turns, Jing Yuan gets bonus damage on basic attack, skill, and ult. So free damage. And number four is the broken one, in my opinion, because uh, for every hit that the Lightning Lord performed, Jing Yuan regenerate two energy, right? So in total, this could be a 20 energy back, and the faster he gets his ultimate back, the faster he can restack the robot, right? So that's OP. So for uh, Jing Yuan 6 Eidolon, for each hit performed by the Lightning Lord, the enemy will be applied with a vulnerable debuff, which increases the damage they take by 12%, stacking up three times. So if you have 10 stack on the Lightning Lord, the 7 other hits will be 36% stronger, right? So the first hit will not be stronger. The second hit is 12% stronger. The third hit is 24% and anything above the third hit will hit 36% more damage, right? This only affects the Lightning Lord damage alone and not your teammate. If you have 10 stack, then you get a lot of the bonus damage, right? That's essentially it. You just get more damage on the Lightning Lord. I think the most powerful would be 1 or 4 because 1 basically doubles your AoE damage and 4 makes it more consistent for you to get high stacks. It's going to add up a lot. E4 is very huge, yes. So yeah, would I recommend going for Eidolon? One, if you're feeling fancy, but in my opinion, Jing Yuan plus his Light Cone is the biggest power spike you can give him. This Light Cone is actually a very big difference from the 4-star Light Cone. This gives you every stat. This is too good. Now, we're gonna do a little bit of like showcasing and stuff, right? I'll probably do floor 2 and 4, because 2 and 4 has proper enemy to showcase him on. So these are my Jing Yuan stat. 60 crit rate, 130 crit damage, and 38 lightning damage, right? I don't have like proper sets and stuff on him, but it should be fine for now. Most people shouldn't have proper set now, unless you're like this guy and you have like fucking 75 crit rate, 200 crit damage, and an Asta, then sure, right? But like, yeah. I think most people don't have sets. Okay, so now this is the uh, Jing Yuan team, right? I'm gonna run him raw damage. I'm just gonna try to survive, right? Without any damage, damage buffer without any damage buff scam. Wait, is there a damage buff scam here? Oh god, there is. I do get the extra turn, don't I? Oh no. Okay, maybe floor 4 will be better. So Mr. Lightning Lord has 8 stacks right now. Oh, that does 24k AoE. Very pog. I'm gonna now use my uh, ultimate to get 3 more stack on the Lightning Lord. You can see the Lightning Lord stack goes up to 6 over there on the screen. So you can see the stack above his health bar or you can see the stack over here, yeah? Conflict is pitiless. 
He's just gonna perma focus on Mars, so there'll be no problem getting the damage or the stacks for my team. It's quite comfortable. Okay, let's get some stacks and hit ultimate. Show no mercy. A foregone conclusion. Here, this thunder. Conflict is pitiless. Here comes the finisher. Go, Lightning Lord. Go. Use my E here. Basic attack this for the shield break. Shield up on Marsh. Get the freeze. Lightning Lord attacks. Your good damage. Yes. E here for the skill refund. Then I'll hit here. Oh no, I have zero skill points. Oh no, I have zero skill point for Jing Yuan. Show no mercy. I got too greedy. It's gonna be a six stack lightning lord. No. I think I have my ult here. Alright, sit on him. This is a Su Shang showcase code. What do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, no, this is not like a March solo carry, okay? Relax. <laughs> Relax, okay? We're gonna buff up here. I'm gonna do this. Let's see his damage. Oh, I'm like one energy away from my ultimate. That's unlucky. Alright, uh, shield up. Frozen. Thanks for the Jing Yuan showcase code. I'm gonna start building Su Shang now. No, that's not the point. Follow my is <laughs> Damn, unlucky. Follow my is the consistent, very high damage. Okay. And the consistent taunt from Marsh, you know, that's very cool. Does the Lightning Lord count? He, he's not going to counter attack no because of the Lightning Lord, right? Oh, do I try? Oh, am I going to die? I'm going to... No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Okay, Marsh, go! <laughs> Some fights are not worth, you know? Sometimes it's not worth to eat the giant hit, you know? Here we go! Well, well, oh. Oh, fuck. I thought that was gonna boost Jing Yuan. Well, <laughs> How much damage were we doing on average with the robot there? Yeah, it was pretty reliable, you know. Especially uh, since we're having a fire damage Jing Yuan that doesn't really benefit him. All right, now let us try to do a quick uh, simulation run, right? And I'm going to show you guys why simulation run damage is a giga, a massive, massive damage scam. If you were to run half of elation and you get the aftertaste buff, that basically triples your damage. This is it. Aftertaste damage. This basically allows you to attack one more time. If you have the other version, it allows you to attack even more times as well. The damage inflation of like aftertaste damage buff is insane. Show no mercy. There we go. Look at the inflated damage. 53,000 damage? 56,000? What is that damage? That is uh, very inflated. A lot of um, a lot of Jingyuan showcase is mainly done in simulated universe, right? And in simulated universe, Jingyuan feels like ridiculously overbearing. You know, <laughs> like his damage just feels insane because so many um, so many elation buffs just scale super well. Okay, there we go. More follow up damage. More follow up damage. After taste damage scam. Exactly. This is the after taste damage scam. I'm gonna tell people that it's a damage scam because like you're not gonna get this damage normally. Okay, so for the piggies. I at least it's fine, right? Because it's like, uh, what's the word? Um, all of this is AOE, so I should be fine here, you know? I'm just doing AOE damage here. Oh no, are they gonna run? They're gonna run. One of them ran. I guess I couldn't kill the middle one anyways. Nice. More aftertaste damage. One to three times? No way. I think that's all the possible buff and stuff, right? So this is going to be the maximum damage inflation, right? Maybe I don't have crit boost from the hunt, so uh, not that high, but it should be pretty high still. All right, let's see how much damage we go here, yeah? 
Show no mercy. Break the shield. Oh my god, 100k damage? No way. Oh my god, another. Huh? Huh? Himiko? <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Oh no, 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 no. No, chat. No, ignore the Himiko. The Himiko isn't here. She's not real. This is a scam, Himiko. Do not build Himiko. This is a scam. Oh, here comes the big nuke. The robot is taking his turn soon. Here is thunder. The preservation. Oh, we have the elation damage uh, decrease as well. I mean, defense decrease. Oh my god, 100k. No way. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, so whatever you see about the Himiko here does not exist, okay? This is a whale Himiko. Focus on the other guy. The other guy is free. This guy is E0S1. The other one is uh, non-existent. She doesn't exist, chat. Himiko good? No, Himiko isn't good. I just like her, so I invest a lot into her. I just like her. Okay, so we did uh, Hall of Chaos. We did World Simulation. Um, I think that should be fine, right? I think uh, Jing Yuan is a pretty, I would say, fair character. I think his damage which is fine, you know, it doesn't like break the game, you know. I think most people were expecting Jing Yuan to like solve every problem they have, but that's just not the case, right? He's just a damage dealer. Usually support solves all the problems you have. <laughs> but yeah, I think that should be enough for today. Little uh, showcase guide-ish thingy, right? Kinda don't wanna take this too seriously. But hey, hope you guys enjoyed this little uh scuffy video. Alright, bye bye YouTube.